I'll do my first video on dynamic lighting and then I'll do the map editing. So the first thing you're going to want to do, uh, obviously go to your dynamic lighting layer. Um, choose a bright color that will stand out against whatever background you're using. Uh, typically I like to use yellow, green, and, uh, and, and pink. They're pretty much the highlighter colors that will stand out against most, uh, most maps. Just pick a contrasting color that you know, will definitely get pop. You want it to pop. You want to get deep into your map. You want to get to the point where you can see every detail uh, if you want very good dynamic lighting. Um, next what you'll do is you'll select the polygon line tool and uh, notice there's a couple options. Uh, I typically hold shift uh, when, I, uh, when I'm doing my lines um, but it only really works if you have the grid enabled. Uh, the grid that I have that's on right now is actually not the grid in a, uh, on the map itself. It's, uh, or I'm sorry, on the uh, Roll20 itself, it's the actual map grid, the one that came with it. It's not representation of um, the actual grid line. So for this one, I don't need to hold shift, um, but just know that while you're holding down, or while you're, while you're doing your lines, until you right click, it will still continue to do lines. So essentially you just uh, you just keep left clicking uh, as you go and if you mess up you can control Z it's the undo. So you want to start obviously at the at one end of the map uh, and then what you do is you just click and you kinda just follow right around the edges of the map and you want to leave a little bit of uh, of the map terrain visible so that when there is dynamic lighting you'll the, the, the um, the players will see that there is a wall here but they won't necessarily see that this is all wall and what this allows is a uh, greater immersion for your for your players because your players won't know where they are in a map they won't know uh, for the well for this case the the map is fairly state cave for one of the uh, for the lost minds of Fendelver uh, campaign that I found on on the interwebs uh, but you pretty much just uh, you're, you're outlining essentially um, you just kind of click in and going around the outer edge of uh, wherever you need to add dynamic lighting to um, and you just go all the way around uh, kind of try to uh, follow the the path uh, of the of the uh, just outside the path of the of the portion that you're outlining uh, just so that it kind of gives that uh, Yes, this is a wall, but there's not much past it feel. Um, so you're just going to go all around and, and just try to pick up some of the, the, the details of the uh, of the cavern so that the players can see. I mean, this is all. You're only going to give like a little bit, maybe a, maybe a uh, half an inch. Um, you don't want to give too much because then it looks, uh, looks kind of bad um, when there's a lot of walls showing. You only want to give them just the, just the, essentially just the wall. You don't want to give them the inner inner parts of the wall. All this, they, the players really don't necessarily need to see that for a, a truly immersive experience. Um, you're just going to want to give them just enough to let them know that yes, it's a wall. And another thing, when you're when you're doing this, as uh, you've seen a couple times where I felt like, man, that line wasn't the the best, like that one right there. Control Z. Uh, a couple times to get you back to a point where you're like, yeah, okay, those are good, and then you just go back in there and uh, you just fill in the the map portion of that that you really want to highlight. Sometimes the the cursor can take a uh, a weird swing, and um, I obviously blame it not on my hand. It's obviously something wrong with the cursor or something. We'll, we'll just we'll go with that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're just. Just going around the outer edge. Um, one thing I recommend for single rooms like this, it's fine to uh, to just do a single um, a single dynamic lighting line because there's nothing really in here that can really cause issues for any of your your dynamic lighting. However, if you're doing um, For instance, a room, and I'll get to that in, in shortly. Um, I will do another uh, area that has doorways and stuff, so I can show you how I do doorways. Uh, but for instance, this right here, I'm going to zoom in just a bit. This is almost a little too close, and actually, it is. A t I want to say it is too close. I'm going to back up. 
maybe. There we go. I'm going to back up and go out just a little bit more because uh, sometimes if you clip um, any of the detail out, like this may be a little too close, but it's not it's not bad enough to where they won't be able to tell it's a wall. Uh, when I first started doing dynamic lighting, I w used really thick lines. Um, I used the regular, just what it was on, because I didn't really know that there was a thin. It's another pointer of mine. Uh, thin lines. Always use thin lines. There's no reason not to use thin lines. Uh, the only thing that makes it a little tricky is when you're doing doorways. Um, sometimes if you're uh, not precise enough, the, there will be like little gaps that your players can see through. But um, now that my line is done, I'm trying to get right to the edge. Now that my line is done, I can do a quick click back, look over it and go, okay. Uh, this definitely is is pretty solid. I'll right click, and what that does is that like kind of sets it in. So now if I were to click somewhere, that's setting new dynamic lighting, but I don't want to do that. So now what I do is I go to objects and tokens. Now that hour line goes away. Uh, another key tip: make sure uh, dynamic lighting is enabled. Uh, so I want to check that, check that, check that, check that. So uh, sorry, not fog of war. Uh, so in your dynamic lighting section, you want to enable it. You want to enable line of sight. What that's going to do is anywhere where there is dynamic lighting, it's going to block past it. So, for instance, this tent, it wouldn't actually be such a bad idea to put some dynamic lighting around this tent just a little bit to block behind it. Because if a player is standing here, they're not going to actually be able to see behind the tent. It's going to block their line of sight. Um, so you definitely, I, I will do that. Um, and that is kind of simple. Um, and I'll show you in a moment. Uh, update only, only update on drop. This is very important to do when uh, you have other players playing your modules because what they can do if you don't check that, they can pick up their character and then they can drag it around without un, uh, without setting it down. So that allows them to pretty much you can they can scope out the entire map and you actually will can't you can't you won't you won't know you you have no idea. So when you enforce uh, update on drop, you're actually forcing them to let go of their character before they can go to that area. Um, and then restrict movement is another key to this as well. It's kind of like all four, you need all four. Um, because this allows it to where they can, if they, they'll have a vision um, and they won't be allowed to move outside their vision range, or rather they won't see out the, outside their vision range if you have these checked. Uh, restrict movement, what that does is they won't be able to move past your dynamic lighting and that comes into play later with the doors. Um, so I'm going to save that. Um, hit OK there. You notice it goes dark. That's because there's no players on the field. So obviously in the objects token, go over to here to my, my panel. I'm going to drag a character out here, drop him. And if you notice, um, he's dead and has no hit points. So I'm going to drop and give him some hit points. I mean, I don't want to I don't play with his dead body. That's not nice. Um, while I'm in here, I can actually even show you lighting. So, so when when a character has vision, um, if they can see in dark, for instance, or if they can like if they have uh, dark vision, um, it gets a little tricky of figuring out how this works. It took me a little while. Um, so, a normal character when they have a torch, um, they're going to see 2020. So, what that's going to mean is that's going to this is going to be your light radius is 20 feet, and, or I'm sorry, it's going to be 40 20. Um, their light radius is going to be total of 40 feet, and that means 20 light, 20 dim. So you need a total of 40 feet. So this option here is going to be your total light that they have vision of. Uh, so if they have 120, so you put 120. Um, if they have any dim light, you always want to make sure this is the start of the dim light. So if this is why this is 40. If this was 20, it would start the dim at 20. And that's bad because they're going to have no dim vision. They're only going to have light. Um, and which is fine if they don't have any dark vision. Uh, or if they don't have a torch lit where there, where there is no dim. There's a couple of scenarios. It, it just varies. Uh, so playing with the light settings is also going to be very helpful with dynamic lighting. Um, for a standard character that doesn't have any dark vision and they just have a torch or a light spell, it's going to be 40-20. Uh, if they have dark vision, what I found, um, I do... If it's at nighttime in pitch black for a character with dark vision, it's 120, and then leave this at zero, or you put a zero here, and that means they have they can see 120 feet. The dim starts at zero, 
so they see 120 of full dim light. It's a little, uh, it's a little frustrating to to get a hold of, but once you figure out the, you know, the the couple numbers you need to remember, it gets pretty simple. Um, so I'm gonna put this back to 20, hit save, and now he's sprung back to life because he was dead. Um, so then what you have here, when you want to see how the player sees it. There's this button called uh, GM Opacity. Uh, so you bring that all the way to full, hit OK. Now this is exactly how the player will see your dungeon. So this gives you a good example of how they see it. So you can actually move around the walls and see how you did. This looks very solid. Um, they can tell that this is the castle wall. They can tell they can't see anything past it. Um, same here, this is all very good. Um, this is just enough, uh, just enough of the wall showing that, um, yes, this is a wall and no breaks on the wall. Uh, and this also right here, the wonderful world of dynamic lighting, it, it even gives you the, the fine detail of like a very, uh, it's, it's like a nook, you know, very dark, but if you went into the corner, you know, it gets a little brighter. Um, yeah, you're going around here, definitely seeing the, all of the wall and it actually looks real good. So I am completely satisfied with my dynamic lighting. I typically always use a character to wander around uh, inside the dynamic lighting that I just did because uh, when I first started, I started doing the dynamic lighting and it actually wasn't um, it wasn't great at all. It was actually very bad. And um, over time, I just got better. And that's another thing. It's just like everything else. You definitely want to... Um, you definitely want to practice and the more you do it the better you'll get like everything else uh, another thing like I was mentioning before uh, for instance this actually is another scenario where dynamic lighting takes into place so this fireplace right here I'll bring him back over so you guys I'll bring my light back over here so this fire should be emitting light uh, a fireplace is 20 and 20 so 20 dim 20 light um, so for same as the character it's gonna be 40 and 20 you want to make sure that all players see the light and you hit save. Now what that does is this gives the, the um, not the illusion, the um, representation that this is a fireplace and it's lighting up this cave. Um, you can do the same thing with the fireplace as you could a torch. You just come into the um, roll 20 thing and just type in torch, hit enter, and now all the torches will start coming up. Uh, you could grab a torch on here, toss it on the ground, spin it around a little bit, uh, shrink it down to size, get deep and dirty into your, uh, into your map here, um, and try to position it on the wall where it actually looks, you know, decent enough. Um, and for the torch, again, uh, it's going to be 2020, so it's actually 4040. Uh, just remember, the first number is your total light uh, period, how much total light um, vision they have, or how much total light it's emitting, and then if there's any dim, that's when you do something with this box. If there's nothing, you just you actually make sure you delete it. Um, and if there is, uh, if it's all dim light, you put a zero. Um, so for this one, it's a torch, so it's going to be 4020. All players see light. Save. Now this torch, no matter where you move it it's going to be lighting up the area. So if they wanted, if this, uh, this this little clan here of orcs wanted to have a torch over here for some reason, maybe they had to use the potty and they didn't, they wanted a night light. Um, so this is going to give a radius uh, of 20 feet light and then it's about 40 feet dim. Uh, obviously you're getting some some dim from here so it's, it, you can actually light up the entire area um, just with these, you know, torches. You could copy and paste them uh, to make it real simple. You click on them, hit control C, click paste. Uh, you want to click wherever you're you're holding them at, like if, wherever you want to place it. Because you could hit paste again and then you got to drag it over there. Or what you could do is uh, if you want it here, click in the blank area where you want it, paste. Wherever you click is where it'll paste once you hit control V uh, for paste. And then you can go around and do the same thing. Real simple. Uh, get them in the walls so they they actually look. Uh, you know, they could be hanging off the walls. Even little, maybe like that. 
Uh, it's probably the best way to uh, to show them is maybe to to put them into the wall a little bit and have them just showing just like that maybe that's probably the best visual uh, effects of them and now you have uh, you know some some areas where it looks like this entire place is now dimly lit because there's overlapping areas and and now this is kind of a more immersive uh, experience for your players uh, same thing with this tent like I was saying um, so this character's here he can see around this tent which you know depending on how tall this tent is let's say this tent is seven eight feet tall he's not gonna see around that so what you do is you come over here your dynamic lighting grab your polygon line uh, go with whatever color is the brightest that you have uh, I'm gonna stick with pink because I've done pink this whole time make sure it's thin and then what you can do is you can kinda kinda judge uh, if this character was standing in front of it what couldn't he see um, he could probably see around the corner a little bit uh, depending on how far front he was saying so I'd probably start like maybe at this corner here uh, pop it around and just kind of go to each point of the uh, of the tent and then right click boom now this gives a good example of what is visible to the player and what's not so this kind of gives you like okay well this is this is dark the player can't see that player can't see that and there you go now you have your uh, your completely immersive uh, cave